So on my property, I have this beautiful shed that really isn't being used for anything other than miscellaneous storage for odds and ends. It's such a shame because it looks much more like a tiny house rather than a normal shed. With that, I have decided to turn it into guest quarters so that when somebody's staying here, they'll have their own accommodations and space. Of course, with it being Texas, AC is a must. So that is my starting point, installing a mini split. Now with the space being pretty small, it's only 168 square feet, I'm going with the only do-it-yourself mini split on the market currently. And it's made by a brand called Mr. Cool. I started by clearing out a walking path and work area on the wall where I'll be mounting the inside unit, which is called the air handler. Then taking some measurements to make sure the unit would fit. I used a stud finder to locate and mark the studs inside this back wall, then removed the bracket on the back side of the air handler and started pre-drilling for holes to mount it. When placing this bracket, I lined up one column of holes to be in line with the stud. And this leaves the other side shy of the next stud, however. So, with one screw holding the bracket in place and a level on top, I pre-drilled the hole locations for the second column of screws that wouldn't hit a stud. In this way, I could remove the single screw I placed in the bracket and tap in some wall anchors. I made sure that these were flush and then remounted my bracket. Next, I started lining out where I needed to drill a hole in the wall for the plumbing that will connect the inside unit to the outside one. And these units are supposed to come with a template, but I wasn't able to locate mine. It's no problem though. I measured over from my left row of holes six and a half inches and made a mark. Then I found a circle that was three and a half inches in diameter and traced around it. To cut this out, I could have used a hole saw, but I didn't have a three and a half inch bit, so I went with a jigsaw instead. I used a drill bit to punch a hole big enough for my blade to fit in, then neatly cut around my pencil mark. That takes care of my inside hole. Now I need to go to the outside and cut another one that's perfectly in line with it. If you're wondering, that is my mother's finger. When you're punching the center hole of the inside circle, make sure that your bit is long enough to go through the entire wall and also punch through the outside wall. This way you can go to the outside, trace yet another circle that is three and a half inches in diameter, and then cut it out with a jigsaw. With the hole cut all the way through, I took the plastic sleeves that come with the unit and test fitted it. Now they do come long so that they can fit through a variety of wall thicknesses. So I made a mark on mine where it needed to be cut down, then used a jigsaw to cut it to length. I placed this on the inside hole, then capped it off on the outside. And now I have a smooth passage for all of the plumbing of the unit to pass through the wall. So the thing about mini splits is that they are pretty simple to install, but it takes professional equipment to charge the refrigerant lines. The Mr. Cool unit though comes with the line set, this long white line, already charged for you. This makes the unit DIYable, but it also means that it comes with a stock length of line set that can't be cut down. So keep in mind when you're picking out your location for it that you'll need to coil up and stow away any excess line. Once I fed through the start of the line set, I paused and also fed in the drainage line. This will drain out any condensation and moisture that the unit creates. I pushed one end through the wall, then connected the other end to the back of the unit make sure to give it a few tugs and see that it wasn't going anywhere. Oh, and also, it doesn't say it in the instructions, but there is a plastic corner cap on the back side of the unit that you need to remove. And this will allow the unit to mount flush to the wall whenever you get it up on its bracket. Having two sets of hands for this part makes this go a lot easier. My mom was around and offered hers up. She got on the outside of the shed and pulled the line as I was on the inside feeding it through. Take your time, especially if you're going up a ladder, to get this entire line through without kinking any of those hard lines. Slow it down for a second. Let me get up on my stool. A little bit, just gentle pulls at this point. Now just try to pull the rigid line if you can. And just pause for a second. Let me get up here. Once you get close, it is incredibly simple to get the air handler on the mounting bracket as it has a lip that you can set it on and then just let it hang. Is that really it? Except for the bottom? Whoa, if it's gonna be this simple, that's gonna be really awesome. Once the top is hung, you need to make sure the bottom is in line with, with that line set being inside of its space and then push on it until it snaps into place. 
And that is the inside unit done. But before jumping out to wire in the outside unit, let me talk to you about this video sponsor, which is Simply Safe. Simply Safe is an incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home, or in my case, my shop, is safe. Since building my shop, I've been looking into plenty of security systems, but settled on Simply Safe for a variety of reasons. I love that all of the devices can easily be set up by yourself, so no waiting on pros to come in. It's very easy and intuitive. Also, it's very fair pricing, and the fact that there's no contract or hidden fees is a plus. Now, even though you're getting a good rate, the system is professionally monitored 24 seven and they'll call the police if anything should happen. And yes, the system still works even if you lose power, Wi-Fi, or the system is attacked. You can customize your system by picking the components you need or want. There are so many options, including cameras, motion detectors, a smart doorbell, and a variety of sensors that will tell you if a window or door is open. If you're interested in checking the system out, then please visit simplysafe.com slash April. Thank you, Simply Safe, for keeping all of my tools safe. <laughs> now let's get outside to wire in that unit. I'm comfortable tackling the simple wiring on my own. So I pulled off the covers and started by wiring in a power line. I purchased outdoor flexible conduit called Liquid Tight, and this came with a 90 degree fitting on one end and a straight fitting on the other. It also had wires routed through it, which prevented me from having to buy a power cord and fish it through. This meant I just had to strip the ends and crimp on some spade connectors. In the other knockout, I ran in the wiring from the line set, and this comes with a connector already wired on for you. I first terminated the line input, ground and neutral wires. And this was as simple as backing off of the screw, slipping in that spade connector I attached earlier, and then tightening back down. Then I connected the output line, which goes up to the air handler, using that simple push together connector they already wired on. And that's it. So next I pushed everything inside so I could close the cap and reattach it with the screws. I moved my unit down to the corner of my building so that it would open up the back. And this not only gave me better airflow, but it also gave me a sneaky spot to coil up my extra line set and stow it away. I don't currently have power out here, so temporarily, or maybe permanently, I'm gonna be running it off a quiet generator stowed away in this little cranny of the building. However, instead of plugging directly into the generator, I first wired in a fuse disconnect box. There's a fuse which adds a layer of protection between the unit and the power source so that if there's trouble, the fuse will trip before damaging the unit. After mounting the box, I used one of the bottom knockouts to wire in the other end of the power cord that runs the outdoor unit. Finally, on the remaining knockout, I purchased a heavy duty extension cord. I cut off the female end, stripped back the ends and wired it in. And I didn't leave a ton of cord here because honestly, the generator is gonna be set right in the spot. All right, getting down to the end, so hang in there. One of the final steps was to try to blend in that line set to the side of the shed. And I found this raceway material specific for line set at a local HVAC shop. And it was hard finding one that sold to the public. So if you have trouble, I know that there are similar products you can purchase through Amazon. Once I tidied that up and knew the unit wasn't moving, I finally connected the line set to the unit. With these lines being pre-charged, you can't disconnect these lines once you connect them or you have to get professionals out to recharge the lines. So before removing the protective caps and making these connections, just make sure the unit is where you want it to be. There we go. That is a drastic improvement over yesterday. Still need some painting on the trim that I had to put in. But the line set comes out, goes down the raceway, coiled up the excess back here, got it all wired in, put in a disconnect, and eventually a generator will go here that I can plug the unit into whenever I want to use it. Even buried the drain line. That comes out right there. Other than paint, that's a job done. And that's it. Overall, it's a very easy install. Probably the hardest part is tidying up that line set. And honestly, it's, it's not that difficult to do. If you're looking to install a mini split, then I hope this video has helped you out. And of course, if you have any questions on what I used in the video, there are links to you down below. Stay tuned as I do more projects converting the shed into guest quarters. I'll see you soon. Welcome to Simply Safe. Thank you.